Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Comstock Channel. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. Thanks for joining us today. And as always, make sure you like this video, share this video with others, and be sure and click that bell icon so you can subscribe. When we have new episodes, you'll get notified. Appreciate that very much. I want to welcome aboard to the podcast. Uh, this time we're doing a three-way show. We have our uh, president of Comstock Investments, Matthew Cruz, with us right now. And also we have Mitchell Hora. Now, he, uh, of course, is the CEO of Continuum Ag, and we want to talk about the work that Continuum Ag does. Um, I know you were very busy, for example, Mitchell, uh, at Commodity Classic. In fact, I couldn't even get up to your booth. Uh, there was so much interest in what you do. So I want to turn you loose here for a second and explain what Continuum Ag does and how it relates to this overall carbon industry that really seems to be just expanding exponentially this year. What do you do there? Yeah, no, you bet. Thanks for having me on, guys. Number one, I'm a farmer. I mean, that's where it all starts. So I'm seventh generation on my family's farm. Um, we're operation down in southeast Iowa. Uh, Ainsworth is technically the town, but uh, near Washington, south of Iowa City kind of kind of area here. So corn soybean operation. And my family's been into this soil health stuff since late, uh, even the late 70s. No tilling since 1978, cover cropping since 2013. I started Continuum Ag as an agronomy consulting company to help family farms like mine quantify and improve their soil health. So I was doing a lot of stuff with the Haney soil health test and just trying to help farmers better understand their data. And that progressed then that we started building a software for that Haney test. We got into doing soil sampling for some of the carbon markets and carbon programs doing soil organic carbon testing. And that progressed to needing to expand our software, needing to offer more holistic um, regenerative ag consulting. Um, but the whole time I was watching the carbon space and family farms like mine weren't able to participate because we'd already been doing these things. And a lot of my customers too, we'd already been doing cover crops and no-till and that. So we never really could participate. And then the Inflation Reduction Act was passed. And Section 45Z was part of that law and became aware of the opportunity for 45Z and on-farm low-carbon intensity bushels playing a role. And uh, I was, at that point, then able to, to start exploring the tools, scored my own farm, and was running the numbers. I'm like, this is going to be absolutely massive. And as I was looking more and more into it, knew that it was going to be absolutely massive, knew that this was where the puck was going, knew that this is absolutely so much better than everything that had been worked on over the last half a decade or so in the carbon space. And uh, just we've, we've gone all in and completely put the company on its head. And long story short, now we are helping farmers to quantify their carbon intensity and where our whole policy is that the farmer does pay a couple bucks to get their carbon intensity score and utilize our agronomist and their local agronomist to document their farm practices and get their scores verified because it's the legitimacy of the data and the legitimacy of that CI score, which is going to be able to command some, some market, some premiums in the marketplace. And we'll dig into all the details, but essentially today, we're the software for farmers to get their CI score, get it verified, and hopefully get paid. Well, I want to bring Matthew into the conversation here. Uh, Matthew, when I came in on board with Comstock um, early in 2024, um, I know you and your dad had already been heavily involved in uh, pursuing information about uh, carbon scoring, carbon capture, carbon pipelines, that just everything related to it. And basically, you're always looking at ways to maybe add revenue streams from the farmer's point of view out there. What caught your eye about this? Uh, there are several companies like this, but Continuum Ag in particular, why did you focus on that? Well, I, I guess I, I heard their name out there and I, I, there's a seems like there's a movement uh, to decarbonize society. And, and uh, you know, you're hearing more and more about... Um, uh, potential for these carbon credits all the time. Obviously, the the carbon pipelines are of a lot of interest, and so I I just went on their website and was just trying to learn from my myself. You know how much money is really out there because there's there's a lot of talk about it, but there's still a lot of 
confusion and questions and and uh you know so that that's why we wanted to talk to mitchell and kind of hear it straight from the horse's mouth you know what's really there and so i actually went on his website it just out of curiosity to to see okay what's we're all supposed to know now it's apparently what our carbon score is and that and that apparently is going to be a major factor going forward in the future could could help determine our corn prices in, in theory um you know and so i, I you know so michigan maybe talk a little bit about that but uh I, you probably don't have it in front of you but uh in, in talking to to continuum ag like the average u.s corn producers csi ci score is uh like 29 is that right mitchell that's and, the default uh, yeah yeah and uh so mine i typed in all the the information it maybe took me half an hour you know most of it is pretty straightforward some of it you know they want to get details like what's your dosage rate on your herbicide i had to go i didn't know that off the top of my head i had to go look it up on the on the chemical order but uh uh you know so stuff like that but it may be a half an hour and then and then you you know you sign up and so my my ci score was 19.6 and so what the website is telling me that in theory that would add another 51 cents a bushel or 128 dollars per per acre with what i'm doing right now um what, what i think is interesting is it, it, it you can play around with it uh and Mitchell, you can talk about this but there's most of your customers are closer to five or less for their ci score right so i'm probably a little above average when compared to what your customers are doing. And so I do, I no-till beans and strip-till corn. And so if I no-till corn, my CI score would probably be less. Uh, I have, a, a, I think a big factor also is the the uh, cover crops. If you're doing cover crops, that also gives you a major boost on your CI score, which I am not doing. Um, I think cover crops are great, but we're more in Northern Iowa and we have a very short, uh, growing season. Uh, and so I, I, I'm a little skeptical that it, it uh, works as well for us as it does in the South. But if I was in the South, I'd be doing cover crops um, a lot more. Uh, and there, there's other things you can do. But uh, uh, and so in, in theory, uh, starting next year, I could get another 50 cents a bushel based off of this score. And then if I want to, I can make more than that. If I want to adjust my cropping methods, I don't know that I do, but I at least have the information now that I can make that decision. And I think that's, that in itself is important. Um, and again, it's not, this is the other caveat is it's not like I'm going to get all of that 51 cents, you know, how much of that can I really expect to get? Cause there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Everyone's got their, their hands out for a piece of that pie. And so I don't know that I should expect to get that full 51 cents. I probably won't. And, but th this is just what I've come across on my own farm, putting in, in the data, um, you know, and so it's, it's a start, but I guess for me, what I learned from this is, um, you know, do I want to, if I want to make more for my corn, maybe I take a harder look at the cover crops or, um, Maybe that maybe there's something else I could be doing, and so. But I think those are some of the big things: is the is the no-till and, and the cover crops, um, things like that. So you're exactly right. I was gonna say that 51 cents. You're not gonna get 51 cents. That's the total potential value of the tax credit. What we don't know yet is what is the farmer cut gonna be. There's some ethanol plants that are paying farmers two cents a bushel today. There's some ethanol plants that have had meetings and publicly said they're planning on covering their cost and giving the farmer the entirety of the rest of that tax credit value. So it's a big spread, and we still are waiting for some of the final IRS guidelines. We're recording this in uh, in April 2024, and we're still waiting for some of the rules, right? That's important that uh, the we're still waiting for some of the IRS guidelines. But what we do know today is that we can get farmers their scores in a 19 it's not bad. It's a lot better than the defaults of 29 and creating a value of 50 cents, 51 cents a bushel. That's huge. Now you're exactly right, Matt. You're going to have to share, right? Hopefully you get somewhere between a third and 50% of that. So that's more so what I would expect that you would be able to 
actually take home somewhere between 15 and 25 cents a bushel is what we're aiming for and what most of the conversations that we were having uh, would fall into that kind of range. But that's for the practices that you're already doing, right? The strip tone stuff. And you're exactly right. If you were to do cover crops, cover crops would significantly lower your score. Now, being further north in Iowa versus where I'm at in southeast Iowa, it doesn't give you as many uh, reductions based on adding cover crop, but it still absolutely helps. The other major driver would be utilizing manure or chicken litter or something like that. That's another really, really great way to significantly reduce your score. And in your neck of the woods, strip till on corn is a great option. You being able to have a little bit of a black strip there to get it warmed up, get a little sunlight on that soil, um, but not tilling the whole thing. So that's actually probably um, where you'd end up staying long term. But the cover crop would help, the manure would help, and you can play around with that on topsoil as well, run the scenarios, right, and be able to recalculate. But nonetheless, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. At least you know what your score is. You know the type of value in that score, and you're in control. You're in control of your data and what you want to do with it. And if these programs get rolled out the way that the law states, you can be in a position to make some serious money. Mitchell, what do you say to producers who ask you, will these rewards offset the extra costs that I have to implement some of these uh, new production strategies out there? That's where they got to just be able to weigh out those options, right? In Matt's scenario, he doesn't have to change nothing. He's already doing some of these things. Now he doesn't have a crazy low score. And actually, uh, for some more data, already at Continuum Ag, we've scored over 215 million bushels. And that's, I don't even have last week's um, add in, but 215 million bushels. And the average CI score that we have found is an 11.0. So a score of 11. So the default is 20, around 29. Every county has its own default score, but usually it's 29 to 30, somewhere in there. Matt's score was 19, so he's about 10 points less. But um, what we found is our average farm is about an 11. Now we work with a lot of farmers that are doing cover crops and doing some of these soil health principles. That's kind of the back, uh, the legacy, you know, the historical approach of Continuum Ag. On my farm, my score is a, last year, my score is a negative 4.1. So really able to uh, get it reduced. But I'm in Southern Iowa with cover crops and no-till and I've reduced my synthetic fertilizer quite a bit. But um, but what we show farmers is here's what your score is based on your practices today. Like what Matt did. He went to topsoil, filled out a farm profile. Now, Matt, we should have uh, told you ahead of time, you don't got to put in all the details with your herbicides and stuff at the beginning. Just get it close enough. So anybody that's that's looking at it, go to topsoil. There's some defaults in there. You can use those. Don't get super carried away. Keep it basic. If you don't know the numbers right off the top of your head, just get it close enough um, just to at least get in general what your score is today. Now, when we are actually verifying a score and when we're creating the actual legit CI claim on our 2024 crop, now we got to have the actuals. And that's what our real business model is. We charge a farmer a couple bucks an acre and they can go and, and utilize our agronomists and our third-party verifiers to get that. CI score verified. And at that point, it does absolutely have to be legit. But go and you can you can get that score put together um, very inexpensively. And actually, you can utilize our code BBC95 for the Billion Bushel Challenge um, to get 95% off on that CI score. So instead of paying the 500 bucks, you can get your CI score for $25. So BBC95 and uh, people can see what their scores are. Who determines that score? And is that subject to change in the future? So the score comes from the GREET model. That's G-R-E-E-T. It's a model developed by the Argonne National Lab, part of the U.S. Department of Energy. So the Department of Energy has been doing CI scoring and, and has developed the GREET model. Uh, they developed the GREET model back in 1994. So this is nothing new. This has been They've been doing this in, the bio, in this fuel space for 30 years. What's new is that they've now added the feedstock component meaning the corn or soybeans or sorghum or rice. So they've added the feedstock component. And because of this 45Z tax credit, now there's actually a reason to really get the farmer data and to actually dial in and lower your CI score. That credit's due to start on January 1st, 2025. So the money is not flowing today. Hardly anybody's talking about this still today, even though we're only a couple months away from this being game time. But a couple months away, 
And uh, what we know, though, is that it will be that GREET model from the Department of Energy. And we know that biofuel companies need to get uh, get their scores lowered. And on the farm, we can help. And this is all about partnership here. This is all about working together. And this is about trying to capitalize on bringing some of these dollars to our rural communities. I look at it as I, I'm potentially making more revenue for something that I'm already doing. Um, now, if I want to take it a step further and adopt cover crops or some of the other things, you know, that's something else I have to take a look at, you know. Um, in some of the estimates that I've gotten, I mean, it could cost as much as thirty, forty, fifty dollars an acre to to incorporate some some of that, and so you you need some additional revenue to offset that. But uh, um, you know, so I, so I, I like it that uh, you know some additional revenue sources is always welcome in farming, especially in a year like what twenty twenty four is is looking like being. And so um, I get my my concern is. You know, there's still a lot of questions about what, and I'm skeptical about what are we really going to end up with, and and I think that's what a lot of uh, farmers are skeptical about. I've signed up with some of these, um, you know, carbon programs in the past, and and uh, you know, wanting you to change your production systems and things like that, and uh, maybe it's still early to um, conclude the results of those, but it just it seems like there was a lot of talk and then end up that they're not getting much for it. And so um, I'm trying to be more optimistic in, in this situation that this is going to be different. Um, but uh, I just wonder when you get a lot of these big companies involved that are basically acting as intermediaries, like funneling the money through them, um, you know, how much is going to be left for the farmer. And so um, I, you feel free to talk about that and, and, and maybe like what, what a, what role do you have with the, the ethanol plants and how does that work? No, it's exactly right. The only way that the farmer is going to be able to get any type, anything that looks like an equitable share, the only way they're going to be able to do that is if they know the know their numbers, know the value of that number, and they don't sell themselves short. And that's going to take collaboration here. That's going to take awareness. But also, I think it's smart for the ethanol plants to pass along a fair share to the farmers because if they adequately compensate the farmer – more farmers will participate, more farmers will be incentivized to actually maybe change some practices and lower their score. And also there'll be, um, you know, the money to pay for legitimizing the data and having it verified and having this be a legit thing so that we don't just have this program for three, The today the tax rate's a three-year program. If we want it to be extended, it's going to have to be legit, right? We're going to, we can't greenwash this thing. We can't have environmental groups coming after us saying that this is all a bunch of hooey. So we got to make sure that there's some sharing. we got to go about this right. The precedent that we're setting here is a really, really big deal. And I'm seeing most ethanol plants saying that they do anticipate adequately sharing with the farmers and, and really going about it from a collaborative standpoint. So really encouraged by what I'm seeing. And we've announced some deals recently where the ethanol companies are saying, yeah, hey, we don't know exactly what the split is going to be. Nobody is definitively saying exactly what percentages are going to go where, but at least, you know, there are companies coming forward saying, we don't know exactly when we know we'll be announcing that, but we do want to share and we want to want to work together here. All right. Well, guys, we're going to take a break right here. There's so much information. I'm going to go ahead and turn this into two episodes. And what we'll do is we'll pick up tomorrow where we left off today in our discussion with Continuum Ag and all the work they are doing with carbon intensity scoring. Sure enjoyed you uh, being with us for this episode. I appreciate that. For producer Brianne Hendrickson, I'm Marlon Bowling. We'll catch you tomorrow on the Comstock Channel. Thanks for joining us on our Comstock YouTube channel. Don't forget you can also find us on Facebook and TikTok as well. Futures trading involves risk. The risk of loss in trading futures and or options is substantial, and each investor and or trader must consider whether this is a suitable investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results.